Hey, praise the Lord. My name is Clinton. Welcome to the Word Prophet channel. This is a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of bringing the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to worshiping God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. What is a Protestant? That is a word that a lot of people use nowadays, and as is the case with many words, we throw it around a lot, but we don't really take the time to say, hey, wait a second, what does this word mean? And if we break it apart into syllables right here, it becomes very obvious what it means. Protestant. A Protestant is someone who protests. That is the inherent meaning of the word. Inherently, it doesn't have anything to do with Catholics or Christians. It's just a word that means someone who protests. And it is used in the context of religion to talk about people who protest against the Roman Catholic Church. So Protestants are Catholic people who are protesting against their own church, which they call the Mother Church. Why do I say that? I know that raises a lot of eyebrows. Well, let's just look at some basic things that will show you the truth of what I'm talking about. This right here is some images. These, I should say, are images of a Catholic cathedral. Some people might call it a Catholic church. We Christians don't call building a church because a building is not a church, but for the sake of this video I will refer to this building as a church, even though that's error. But these are some images of what people would call a Catholic church. You can see there's a lot of intricate, intricate I do speak English, intricate architecture, a lot of fancy and luxurious furnishings. Uh, there's a lot of idolatry involved. There's this crucifix right here, an image of a man being crucified that Catholics think is Jesus Christ. Here it is again. There's lots of imagery uh, in these, lots of uh, idolatry. Here's another crucifix. This crucifix is an abomination to the Lord Jesus Christ. He commanded us not to make any such thing. And so this is what people call a Catholic church. This is what people call a Protestant church. You can see again there's lots of luxurious eloquent architecture lots of expensive architecture lots of imagery here and here lots of freemasonic satanic imagery um, this is a pretty luxurious cathedral right here so is this and this um, as you can see and here's the the abominable image of the crucifix again so once again these are what people call catholic churches these are what people call Protestant churches. Catholic churches, Protestant churches. Catholic churches, Protestant churches. And you can see that they're basically the same. This is a series of images of a Catholic priest. Okay, you can see the ridiculous clothing that this man wears, the gold and, and uh, scarlet, and the ridiculous blasphemous image that he's holding in his hand which is an abomination to the Lord okay you can see this man's costume this man right here has another ridiculous costume uh, which we're not commended to wear at all okay this man also this man also and this man also okay these are Catholic priests these are Protestant pastors okay they call themselves pastors, but they probably believe that they're priests too. You can see the ridiculous costume that this man is wearing, standing in front of this abominable crucifix, which is an abomination to the Lord, a graven image, which we're commanded not to make. He has a, this broken cross on his outfit, which if it's inverted, forms the thing that people call a peace sign nowadays, which actually indicates the, some, the person's rejection of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. You can see these men right here with their ridiculous costumes. That this man has the Pax Christus symbol from the Roman Catholic Church on his sash there. Um, if we could see more closely, there's probably lots of ridiculous idolatry and imagery. And you can see here that these men are dressed in these ridiculous costumes as well. These are so-called Protestant pastors. You can see there's a woman right here. She's also included. Another woman right there. Uh, they're all included in the um, in the uh, so-called clergy of the uh, Lutheran Church, the Protestant Church. There's another woman right there in front of their abominable idol right here. So once again, these are Catholic priests, ridiculous outfits, abominable idols. These are so-called Protestant priests or pastors. Okay, ridiculous outfits, abominable idols. Same thing, same family. The Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, adopted the pagan doctrine of the Trinity from well, paganism, 
and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that here because you can do the research on that yourself, but the fact is that there is no Trinity or Triune God mentioned anywhere in the Holy Bible. So the the Trinity is, is I won't say it's a Catholic invention because the Catholic Church didn't invent it, but they did borrow it from paganism. And here are some images of the Catholic Trinity. Okay, these three rings we can see here. This abominable image, which we see in a lot of Bibles, like the New, I think the New American Standard Bible, the New King James Bible, that's what it is. The New King James Bible has this satanic image on the front of it. This is their supposed trinity. This is supposedly God the Father. This is supposedly God the Son. And this is supposedly God the Holy Spirit. And they're all hanging out together in heaven, sitting on two thrones, uh, because their God the Holy Spirit doesn't have uh, a physical body to sit on a throne, I guess. So that's the imaginary trinity of the Roman Catholic Church. Here's another picture of it. That's supposedly God the Father, that's supposedly God the Son, and that's supposedly God the Holy Spirit. And you can see in all these the, the Roman Catholic Trinity. Well, I did a search on uh, Protestant Trinity churches, and here is a church that calls itself Protestant, and they call themselves Holy Trinity Episcopal Church. And here they even have Holy Trinity guest parking. I guess that's when the Holy Trinity wants to come to their church that they can park right here, I guess. So here we have the Roman Catholic Trinity, Trinity doctrine, and here we have the Protestants believing the same doctrine. And of course there is no Trinity, there is no triune God, there is no such thing in the Bible anywhere. So if we look at some things that have to do with the, the Protestant churches, we can see that they have the same things going on that the Roman Catholic Church does. The Trinity, which is a pagan doctrine that doesn't exist anywhere in the scripture. And you know the scripture says that whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. And so Trinity has nothing to do with the doctrine of Christ. And those that believe in the Trinity of gods do not have God. Period. And so the Roman Catholic Church teaches the Trinity doctrine and all of her Protestant daughters do as well. Okay. Sacraments. Where do sacraments come from? They don't come from the Bible. There's no sacraments in the Bible. The word sacraments is never mentioned in the Bible. Sacraments are a Roman Catholic invention. Well, I won't say invention once again because they're borrowed from paganism. <clears throat> but sacraments are a Roman Catholic religious implementation that has nothing to do with the Bible or the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Confirmation. Again, confirmation has nothing to do with the doctrine of Jesus Christ. It's a Roman Catholic pagan tradition. Um, so is the Eucharist, has nothing to do with the Lord's Supper or the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of these are shared by the Protestant denominations as well. Protestant denominations, most if not all of them, believe in the Trinity. They, a lot of the Protestant denominations, but not all of them, uh, do observe sacraments. Okay. Many Protestant denominations observe confirmation. You see, in some Protestant denominations reject certain doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church while keeping most of the others. And other Protestant denominations reject different doctrines and practices of the Roman Catholic Church, but yet keep most of the others. See, so they're all part of the same family. Okay, Eucharist, false gospel. Uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church preaches a false gospel that can save no one, and all of her Protestant daughters preach false gospels that can save no one as well. And the Roman Catholic Church teaches that the Church is your mother, and by keeping the sacraments, and by believing in the Trinity, by undergoing confirmation and by keeping the Eucharist, that you will be saved. Well, that's a lie. Okay, The uh, Protestant denominations tell you that if you will just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and repent and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, then you'll be saved. And that's a lie. See, the, the, the apostles of Jesus Christ preached, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that is the truth. And that's the gospel that the Roman Catholic and Protestant churches will not teach you. Costumes. Costumes are very popular in the Roman Catholic and Protestant churches because they are partakers of that system of the Nicolaitans, the deeds and doctrines of the Nicolaitans, which Jesus Christ hates. And you'll find that in Revelation chapter 2, verses 6 and 15. And the reason that they wear costumes is because they love to exalt themselves and receive the honor of men instead of humbling themselves before the living God and being exalted by him. Uh, pagan festivals. This is another thing that the Catholic and Protestant churches both have in common because she is the mother and they are the daughters. So they all keep the pagan festivals of the Christ Mass and the Ishtar Festival and the Halloween Festival and the Lent and all the other pagan festivals that came from uh, paganism 
basically, and had been adopted by the Roman Catholic Church, <clears throat> pardon me, and passed on to all of her Protestant daughters. Okay, liturgy. Liturgy is another thing that the Catholic Church and Protestant churches share, which is completely foreign to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Liturgy is when a religious service is all planned out before it starts, even down to the minute. Everything is planned out exactly the order that it's going to happen and how long each thing is going to be, and then it's performed. That's, it's an act. It's entertainment. It has nothing to do with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ or worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Okay. Seminary. Seminary has nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ or his church, and it is something that is uh, implemented both in the Catholic and Protestant churches because they're all part of the same family. Seminaries are run by Jesuits, which are a Catholic organization, which call themselves the Society of Jesus, but actually they have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And the purpose of the Jesuits is to go after the Protestants who have thought to, left, thought to leave the faith of the Roman Catholic Church and to bring them back under the headship of the papacy, whether they know that that has happened or not. And the purpose of a seminary is to train people to be deceived and to deceive others and keep them away from the truth of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That's what the purpose of a seminary is. And there, there are seminaries that are both Catholic and Protestant. And, uh, that are both designed to destroy souls. And theology. Theology is uh, what some people consider the science of studying God. Um, the Bible calls theology precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Theology is the, the is man's carnal way of pretending that he has wisdom to understand God. That's what theology is. So we can see that Catholic churches, Protestant churches are the same thing, part of the same family. We can see that Catholic priesthood and Protestant priesthood are the same. They're part of the same family. We can see that the Catholic Trinity doctrine is also believed among the Protestants. And so those that are Christians are neither Catholics nor Protestants. Those that are Christians don't protest against the Roman Catholic Church. We have come out of her. Because the scripture says, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. It doesn't say protest against her. It says come out of her. Come out of her. The disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ are not called Catholics, and they are not called Protestants. They are called Christians. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Christians. Okay, the disciples of what? The disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, wrote these words. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Neither Peter, nor any of the apostles, nor any prophet, nor Jesus Christ himself ever mentioned Catholics or Protestants in the scripture ever. You see, and so Catholics and Protestants have for their mother the Roman Catholic Church. But we who are Christians have for our mother the New Jerusalem. And that is our home if we continue in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. May this message be a blessing to you in the name of Jesus. Amen.